Hello and welcome to the another video of the course and in this video uh, we will continue the analytic design of motor by calculation of some uh, direct dependent variables as I explained in the previous video uh, the direct dependent variables are those variables that uh, we can calculate them uh, using explicit equations so by assuming proper value for independent variables immediately we can calculate direct dependent variables so let's start the output torque is equal the output power divided by rated mechanical speed so as you know the output power and the rated mechanical speed are independent variables so we can calculate the output torque using this equation uh, this is continuous uh, continuous uh, rated torque and our design should be capable to generate this electrical torque okay in its uh, steady state operation in its uh, continuous operation so uh, in design we considered 10 percent our design on torque and 10 percent our design of speed and we set these values here in uh, rated output power and rated speed we set these uh, values that are uh, the motor name plates okay motor rating and now uh, using this equation we can calculate the output torque as you can see here the output torque is the rated output power divided by rated speed and using this equation uh, we can calculate the rated frequency of supply we have the rated speed of motor in rpm this is a motor rated speed and we assumed a proper initial value for the number of poles so we can calculate the rated frequency of supply using this equation i implemented uh, this equation here in this excel sheet as you can see here the rated frequency of supply is calculated uh, considering uh, the value of rated speed and proper number for the number of poles so let me write here in description rated frequency of the supply in this uh, example the rated frequency of supply is 99 hertz the input power input power of uh, the motor is equal to the output power divided by uh, desired efficiency the desired efficiency in in this design is 95 percent and these are uh, motor specs and we consider it uh, 95 percent uh, for uh, desired efficiency and 0.9 for a desired power factor so the motor input active power is equal to the output power divided by desired efficiency as you know we are going to fit the motor using a battery pack so we will use a three-phase inverter for drive of uh, motor the motor is here 
and this is the output power of motor we write p out and we have a desired efficiency of motor here i write uh, a time and this is efficiency of inverter and the overall efficiency uh, overall overall efficiency of system is efficiency of inverter times the efficiency of motor uh, this is efficiency of uh, motor this is only the efficiency of motor not uh, overall efficiency so the input power is here p in input active power to the motor okay and the input volt ampere uh, is equal the output power p out divided by desired power factor times uh, desired power factor times desired efficiency okay so i implemented this equation here and I wrote input kVA that is equal the output power divided by desired efficiency times desired power factor. Okay, the next uh, variable is terminal current, and terminal current uh, is calculated using this equation. Our motor is a three phase motor. The winding has three phases. So the input terminal current is equal input active power divided by SQRT of three times line to line terminal voltage times desired power factor. So uh, we calculated the line-to-line -line terminal voltage uh, in this sheet uh, considering a proper strategy for switching of two-phase inverter and voltage of uh, DC voltage of battery pack and a value for voltage drop and we set uh, the value of uh, line to line terminal voltage equal to 47 okay so by knowing the value of terminal voltage we can calculate the terminal current using this equation uh, here in this example the terminal current is around uh, 70 amperes okay here you can see this equation so uh, till now we calculated the terminal voltage and terminal current now we are going to calculate the phase voltage phase current and coil voltage and coil current okay uh, the phase current is equal uh, terminal current for a star connection and is equal terminal current divided by SQRT of 3 for delta connection. As you know, we have two type of connections, okay? Two types of uh, connection for T-phase winding, a star connection or delta connection. And in a star connection, the phase current and terminal current are equal. Uh, but for delta connection, the phase current is equal terminal current divided by SQRT of 3. I implemented this equation uh, here. The RMS value of phase current is equal terminal current when the connection is a star and otherwise is equal terminal current divided by SQRT of 3. Uh, this is RMS value of phase current. Uh, see, for example, if I select delta connection, 
the phase current, the RMS value of phase current is lower. Uh, but uh, okay, but let's change to star connection. And in similar way, we can calculate uh, phase voltage. And as you know, uh, the phase voltage is equal terminal voltage divided by SQRT of 3 for a star connection. And the phase voltage and terminal voltage are equal for delta connection. Okay. Uh, I implemented this equation here. Uh, phase voltage. If the connection is a star, the phase voltage is equal uh, terminal voltage divided by square two of three, and otherwise is equal terminal voltage. See here for for example, if I select delta connection, the phase voltage, the RMS value of phase voltage is equal terminal voltage. Select the star connection. Okay, uh, the next variable is uh, coil current and uh, coil current is equal uh, phase current divided by number of parallel passes. Uh, here uh, you can see the one phase of uh, winding and the RMS value of coil current is phase current divided by number of parallel passes. In some application, we need to consider parallel passes because the terminal current is uh, high, as in our case, because in our case, the terminal voltage is low and terminal current is high. So here I consider the number of parallel passes in winding equal to six. I will explain uh, this decision. And the next variable is uh, coil voltage. Uh, in this design, I considered a double layer winding for motor, a distributed double layer winding for motor. So as you know, the number of coils in each phase is equal to the number of stator slots divided by the number of phases. So the phase voltage is equal coil voltage times n s divided by m that are total number of coils in each phase divided by number of parallel passes. So already we calculated the phase voltage we know the value of number of phases. We assumed a proper value for number of stator slots and the number of parallel passes. So we can calculate the coil voltage. And look at uh, this equation. This parameter R exists uh, in independent uh, variables. Okay, here, number of stator slots and NP is uh, the number of parallel passes in the winding. So here we can see the calculated values for uh, coil current and uh, the coil voltage. The coil current is RMS value of phase current divided by 6 and the coil voltage is calculated by this equation. This is number of coils per each phase. Number of coils per each phase is equal number of stator slots divided by 3. And the coil voltage is this equation. is calculated by this equation. In this example, uh, the number of stator slots is 36. Uh, so the number of coil in each phase is equal 36 divided by 3 that is equal 12 and uh, we have 6 poles.
So the number of coils in each phase in each pole is equal to two. Uh, I consider it the number of parallel passes equal to six. So this is uh, one phase. One, two. This is one pole. Okay, this is another pole. One, two, three, four, five. And this is another pole. So the num this is phase current. I phase. And this is coil current. Okay. So the number of coils per each phase per each pole is two. The number of parallel pass is, uh, passes is six. So uh, this is this figure uh, shows the winding of one phase. Uh, okay, so uh, review the scans and let's continue the design uh, in the next uh, video.